Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how can we track with Sysmon when a process is being tampered with, specifically when its image is being replaced by something else. And specifically with Sysmon, according to Mark Rusinovich, we're able to track two different techniques. One of them is going to be, well, process hollowing, which is used by many of the frameworks out there. And the other one is going to be process herpaderping. The main difference between these two is, and in, in the case of process hollowing, is that we are starting a process, we're suspending that process, and then we're replacing its image and then modifying the PEP. So we're able to execute that new image, which we replaced the previous one in memory. In the case of process herpaderping, what we're doing is we are creating a file, we're locking that file, starting a process, and then we are replacing the image on disk for that specific process that we started with another one. And then we modify our PEP and make sure that everything's set up properly and we execute that one. Now, in my experience with Sysmon, I have to be honest, process herpaderping detection works perfectly. Many attackers out there are using this, and this could be a secondary way of detection. Now, products like CrowdStrike, Sentinel-1, and some others actually do detect this technique when it's being employed, but attackers may disable that ADR, and sometimes they just may miss Sysmon, depending on how we have it configured, are we hiding it, or they just simply missed it completely as part of their automation, and we have kind of like this secondary backup for detection. Uh, in other cases, it's just very good just to have it there. Now, in the case of process hollowing, I have to be honest. I've tested this with all kinds of samples out there that I could find in GitHub. I even asked some of my guys like, hey, I don't want to be biased to the way I code. Can you give me a, your own version of process hollowing? And they just simply coded it in Rust, C Sharp. They coded it in C. And we tested those. and Sysmon was not detecting those. So at least for process herpaderping, we have a very good, reliable way of detecting that attack. Now, when it comes to process hollowing, it varies quite a bit depending on the specific sample to which Sysmon was coded against. So do take that in mind and do be careful. So let's take a look at, at the VM on how I would configure a detection of process tampering. So when it comes to process tampering, my recommendation is just to enable it fully and then just exclude all of those processes that may trigger uh, false positives. Some of them could be Electron apps, which are popular for this. Also, Git is another one that actually triggers on this since it locks a file and replaces the content of that file. Same thing for Google Update is another one. All of those different programs that as far as their update mechanism lock file may trigger a false positive. So I configured this, applied it to this machine, and I'm, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following the sample code for process herpaderping, which is part of the uh, JXY-S github.io blog, where he covers process herpaderping and he goes in detail of the different steps that you can take to execute process herpaderping. In fact, uh, CrowdStrike is another one who has a very nice blog post on it. I'm going to be using this example. As I mentioned, if you want to have some of the existing excludes that are out there, Olaf has a very nice list in his Sysmon modular project. So he has already excludes for Simon Tech and non process Visual Studio Code, WMI, Diagnostics, Git, Firefox. And as always, he has his include all for this type because it's one of those that we want to include them all and just exclude all of that noise. So let's go over here to PowerShell. First, I'm going to check my configuration. I have nothing right now applied on this machine, so I'm going to do sysmon minus c process tampering i applied my configuration i confirm my configuration 
we can see that it has been applied on the machine and we can see a process tampering, a match, exclude, and it's an end. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the process herpaderpine example where I have a Mimikatz executable, a hello world executable. The hello world executable is actually going to be replaced by Mimi.exe and its parent process is going to be SVC host. So let's run this example right now. And we can see here that Mimikatz was executed. If we look at the output, we can see each one of the different steps that were being taken, source file, target file. So we're going from Mimi to hello world and we know we're writing this. So let's take a look right now at what events that we got generated. So I'm gonna go here again into PowerShell and I'm going to run with PS to get Sysmon. process tampering events. And here you can see that the image was locked for access for Hello World. So we can see that it was locked and probably replaced with the Mimikatz one. Um, now we didn't get the replacement of the image, that event specifically event for replacing image. So when we see image replacement, as it could be seen in the tweet from Mark Rusinovich. So if we go over here and we go up one of the images he shared, it says image is locked for access, which is what we saw. And if we go to the next image, we're going to see the images being replaced. This image is replaced is specifically to process hollowing. But as I mentioned, I still haven't figured out which was the specific sample that, that was used when this detection was coded, uh, but I still recommend that you keep it enabled fully. So I do recommend that you enable this in your environment. And as always, I hope that you found this information useful and I'll see you guys in the next video.